Good morning. Good morning. This is my first time at the Pearl Conference, and this is also my first ever public conference talk, so I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share with you all my adventures of talking to computers and talking Pearl out loud. So, next slide. Who am I? So my name is Emily. You can find me on GitHub as Touche or on Twitter as Yomili. I write code for Fastly. Next slide. Fastly. At Fastly, we help developers make fast, secure, and reliable digital experiences happen by processing and serving customers' applications at the edge and as close to end users as possible. We built an edge cloud platform designed to be programmable and support agile software development. We have 60 points of presence around the world as of March 31st, 2019. And I work on the platform for delivering the core CDN configurations at Fastly. And next slide, I write Perl by voice. Next slide. Your first question might be, but why, 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 why would you want to do that? That sounds kind of insane, and it sort of is. Next slide. Because I am an unfortunate uh, soul who ended up with RSI symptoms. In the fall of 2017, I started having problems in both of my arms. If you're not familiar with RSI, it's pain felt in your muscles, nerves, and tendons caused by repetitive motion and overuse. So in our industry, it often comes from using a keyboard mouse, these things too much. So um, it significantly impaired my ability to type in both of my arms. Next slide. Before getting to voice, I tried taking breaks. I tried wearing the wrist braces at night. I tried anti-inflammatories. I went through rounds of occupational and physical therapies. I did tried massage. Next slide. Next slide. I tried acupuncture, chiropractor, pain creams, yoga, stretching all kinds of stuff. If you can think of it, I probably tried it. Next slide. I tried ergonomics, so I got an ergo evaluation. I switched to standing desk only. I got a left hand mouse so, so I could split the load between my right and my left hand. I got specialty keyboards. Next slide. Next slide. I tried a split keyboard. I tried even more specialty keyboards. I ended up ultimately with the top left keyboard there with the white keys and mitosis to help offload work from my pinkies to my thumbs. And with all these modifications, it did get me quite far, but it was still feeling very limited. Even with taking four leave a day, uh, it's a lot, right? Um, and then moved to prescription anti-inflammatories and doing all kinds of stretching at a very disciplined way and taking breaks all the time when I'm working. I could only get about maybe 30 to 45 minutes of typing in a, in a given window, and over a course of a day, probably maybe three hours of typing, but it's very broken up, and the quality of life as I'm working was pretty poor. It was constantly being interrupted by your body. I think everyone's had some annoying alert from something that's just pinging you, or someone coming over to your desk and, hey, 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 right? Like, that's pretty annoying. Imagine your body doing that while you're working. Pretty uncomfortable. Next slide. So, sad face. Uh, I, because I was feeling so limited, I started looking into alternative ways that would not involve my hands. Next slide. Can I use my voice? Can I use my voice instead and remove the keyboard mouse entirely, burn them, I don't care, figure out, you know, can I just like get rid of it? Um, and even at, at that point in time, even if what I found with voice was super clunky and difficult to use, it was still better than what I was doing, probably. So let's try it out, why not? Next slide. When I first started, I was expecting writing Perl by voice to go something like this. Next slide. Video play. Next window. Talon mode. Next window. Video play. Open. Talon sleep. Open parenthesis. Uh, go to beginning of document. Delete. O. Press O. Go to end of document. Press caps lock. Info. <laughs> Delete info. Press caps lock. Press caps lock. Info. <laughs> De Delete info. Press capital I. Delete it. Delete I. 
press capital I. Delete I. Press capital I. <laughs> Scroll. Press caps lock? Press caps lock. <laughs> Delete, I scroll this conflict. I don't scroll this conflict. <laughs> Delete, adult scrolls conflict for. <laughs> Delete, adult scrolls conflict for. Delete, adult scrolls conflict for. Thank you. <sighs> Delete, thank you. Open parenthesis, dollar sign, string, comma, dollar sign, times, close parenthesis, equals, at, input, semicolon. <laughs> Correct the goals as important. <laughs> Equal sign, at, input, semicolon. <laughs> Equal sign, at, sign, input, semicolon. One. Okay. <laughs> Delete. Backspace. 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 <laughs> Enter! Correct string. One. Okay. Print. Dollar sign string. X. Dollar sign times. <laughs> Correct print. 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 <laughs> Two. Okay. Correct X. Times. X. Nine. Okay. Lowercase na- X. Semicolon. Enter. Video finish. Next slide. <laughs> right, so if I had to work like that all day, oh man, that would be rough. But, <laughs> but actually, when I started looking at, at voice solutions, what I found was, was much, much different. Uh, and so I'm going to do a short demo for you writing the same code that this gentleman was trying to write, but using the current tool set that I use today in my daily work. Next slide. Video play. Phrase open arcs, all caps info, comma, space, quote, dash, push, semicolon, enter. At sign, phrase input, op equals, op input, all caps info, push, semicolon, enter. Word close, arcs, all caps info, push, semicolon, enter. Arcs, dollar phrase string, comma, space, dollar phrase times, push, op equals, at sign, phrase input, semicolon. Pop, jump. Jump, delete word. Delete word. Phrase string, push, pop, jump, jump, delete, jump, go right, delete, slap. Phrase print, space, dollar phrase string, pearl times, dollar phrase times, semicolon. Video finish. Next slide. Mm. <laughs> Reload. Oop, next window. Reload. Next slide. Ah, last slide. Reload. Mm, okay, sorry. Next slide. Video finish. Next slide. Sorry, escape. Next slide. Ah, it's so brittle. <laughs> so case in point, this is me working around there not being an accessible like video thing that I can use in my talk, so we'll get to that. But um, yeah, so let me just do this manually. So next slide. Reload. Ah. Ah, come on. Talon mode. Next window. Reload. Talon sleep. Oh, Talon mode. Present full screen. Next slide. Talon sleep. Sorry, it helps if you turn it on. Okay, so let's dig a little bit into the tech that I'm using to make, make all that work. So, obviously I need a good microphone. I'm using a microphone now that uh, 
hopefully is picking up noise only from one direction, so it's not picking up a lot of ambient noise. I am also running Dragon Dictation. So this is a software some of you might have heard of before. It's used across a lot of industries. You use it to dictate documents, emails, that sort of thing, but it hasn't been widely used to write code or even, you know, especially Perl. Uh, the technology that I'm really excited to tell you all about today is Talon. So Talon, next slide. Talon is a software for hands-free input where um, you can use voice commands, noise, it also has eye tracking support, so you, you can get off your keyboard but still control your, your computer. It uses the Dragon Dictation API, so it sort of runs on top of Dragon and uses Dragon's voice engine, although it does have its own free built-in voice engine, but it, it's not quite at parity yet, so I still use Dragon. Um, you can, the, the exciting part is that you can programmatically configure all your tool set using Python. So all the, the things I'm gonna demo for you today are uh, built in Python files on my laptop um, they're not Talon itself, so I can customize this thing like crazy. The software Talon is free, and there is Patreon support if you are a kind soul that wants to help forward the, you know, voice for coding uh, cause, so check that out if you're interested. Next slide. So let's start at the ABCs. Um, when you start learning a new keyboard or working by voice, you want to start with the basic keys, so how do I get letters? How do I hit the you know, letter keys? You would think that, oh, I can just say A and I'll get A. I'll say B and I'll get B. But there's a problem with that. Next slide. With the way we pronounce the alphabet, there are a lot of letters that sound very similar. I'm sure everyone in here has been on the phone when you have to be like, M is in Mike, N is in Nancy, you know, because you don't know if the other person is going to get the right letter or not. So A, H, J, K could all be confused. B, C, D, E, G, P, D, V, Z, right? Like, that's a lot of letters that could really be confused. So for accuracy purposes, we want a different way to represent the alphabet. Next slide. So the phonetic alphabet. There's a system already to help differentiate between the letters. You, you use a word instead. So alpha, bravo, bravo charlie, delta. Um, this would give us accuracy, but I don't think anyone wants to say November over and over. So uh, we're going to design our own uh, word set for the alphabet. Next slide. Next slide. So this is the alphabet I use, and this is all customizable. If you wanted something, you know, different, you could, you know, make it whatever you want. But um, all of these are, are how I get all the letter keys. So I'm going to do a quick live demo for you, uh, spelling some words so you can see how this works. Talent demo. Pit each red look. Space. Sit sun. Space. Air whale each sun. Odd mad each. Delete delete mad odd, each. Delete, delete each. <laughs> Talent sleep. Next slide. Okay, so what about all those symbols in Perl, right? Like, I don't know, is that gonna be a problem? So actually, it's not. It's, these are pretty easy. This is something I didn't have to spend a whole lot of time solving. All the symbols are what you think they would be. So dollar, dollar, you know, at sign, at sign. You can customize it to be whatever you want. So if you want to make it hard for yourself, you can. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> you have the power. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but so, you know, I'll demo for you. Um, uh, oops, sorry. Oh, gosh. What is going on here? Sorry. That was a mistake. Okay, sorry. We're back. Um, my, uh, I'll demo for you here some of the symbols. Talent demo. Dollar slash equals quote ampersand quote. Pipe, quote, at sign, quote, semicolon, talent sleep. Next slide. That's actually some valid Perl that I pulled from a Perl camel that I generated. <laughs> because yay, Perl. Next slide. OK, so once you know your basic keys, your alphabet, your modifiers, you know, control is control, shift is shift or ship if you have trouble in, uh, you know, enunciating the FT, which is kind of a hard sound. Uh, if you know keyboard shortcuts for whatever you're using, this will get you quite far. Talent demo. Phrase Perl is awesome. Command air. Command cap. Command right, enter. Command vest. Talent sleep. Next slide. Homophones. Okay, so this is unique to working by voice. Homophones are words that sound the same, but they are spelled differently. So like, bite, bite, or bite. There's three different, you know, which one, do I, am, which one am I saying? You don't know. 
the voice you know, system doesn't either. So we have to have a way to disambiguate homophones on the fly as I'm working so I can get the right words. So talent demo, phrase bite, select word, mm. command error, ah. command right, delete, command error, phones, phones bite. Mm. Oh, I did a thing wrong. Phones bite. Phones bite. Showed up here because I changed the focus. Sorry. All right. So talent sleep. So you can see, like, I have a web view that pops up, and I can pick which uh, version I want. Talent demo. Pick three. Except now I'm not focused in there. Delete word. Phones bite. Pick two. There you go. Delete word. Phrase kernel. Select word. Select, uh, command error. Phones. Talent sleep. So if there's only two homophones, then I, I can get like an immediate switch, which is cool. So next slide. Oh, last slide. <laughs> last slide. So if you want to learn more about homophones, I have a really great resource for you with a lot of good content. Next slide. It's a book called Llamaphones. <laughs> and uh, I bought one for my nephew, and then I thought it was so good I bought one for myself. So I <laughs> highly recommend you check it out if you're really interested in this topic. Next slide. Okay, so repetition. If you remember from the uh, video at the beginning, talent sleep. If you remember from the video in the beginning, um, the gentleman saying backspace, 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 right? Um, that doesn't take long to get really frustrating, right? Uh, <laughs> so we need a better way to repeat commands efficiently so that we don't get frustrated and you know table flip and whatever. So um, I, uh, so a lot of people who've done voice coding before might use like twice, thrice to say like repeat this so many times. But what comes after thrice? I don't know, and I don't want to make up a bunch of words or like figure out what comes next. I don't know. Maybe there's English words that that represent that, but I don't know what they are. So I did a thing um, that's a little bit hacky with the English language where you can get a representation of numbers in a different form that I don't use as much. So there's ordinals, right, that I'm not going to use that much. So I'm going to use ordinals to represent repetition. So if I say go down fourth, it's going to go down four times. Um, why can't I just use regular numbers? Why can't I say delete four? Because there's no way to tell whether you want the um, number four and then, or sorry, delete four. So delete and then the number four, or if you want to delete four times. It's hard to disambiguate, so um, yeah. Talent demo. Talent demo. Reload. Present full screen. Talent demo. Emoji whale fourth. <laughs> Emoji raise tenth. Delete second, talent sleep. Next slide. Okay, formatting. So what if I want to format my text? I don't want just like, you know, I need like uppercase, I need camel case, I need whatever. Um, so I have a bunch of tools written in Python that uh, will format the text as I want. I can give it uh, commands ahead of the text and it'll sort of do what I want. So I'll demo that right now. Talent demo. Phrase Perl is awesome, enter. Snake Perl is awesome, enter. Kebab, Pearl is awesome. Enter. All caps, Pearl is awesome. Enter. Pack title, Pearl is awesome. Talent sleep. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, so custom vocabulary. What if I run into a word that my voice engine doesn't know about already? I need, you know, but maybe it's all over my code base and I don't want to spell it out every time because I get annoying. If so there's actually support for me to add custom vocabulary. If, I, if the engine can guess well enough the pronunciation of it, I can just add it to the vocabulary and it'll just sort of work. So I'll demo for you a few words I've added to my vocabulary so that I can just say them and not have to spell them. Talent demo. Phrase upsert. Enter. Phrase pearl tidy. Enter. Phrase git hook. Enter. Phrase on def. Enter. Phrase diag. Enter. Escape. Oh, present full screen. Next slide. Next slide. 
All right, so I've given you a lot of building blocks so far about um, how I work. Now I'm going to show you a longer video where I'm writing a Perl application and uh, so you can get a sense of the flow, how, what it sounds like. Video play. Highlight. Phrase I term. Enter. Mad crunch dip sit red space scrap. Mad crunch dip sit red space snake pearl demo. Enter. CD snake pearl demo. Enter. Snake title random emoji. Dot pit look. Control air. Subble. Enter. Diffy up. Pearl hash bang. Enter. Delete. Pearl use. Pack title mojo licious light. <laughs> <laughs> Undo. Focus eye term. New tab. CD Talon home. CD Talon user. CD Talon user. Subble dot enter. Diffy up. Go file. Phrase pearl. Enter. Spring one three. Push. Go left. Comma space dub quote. Phrase mojo. Look sit cap sit odd urge sun. Save. Command whale. Command whale. Space. Title mojo licious. Delete word. Pack title mojo licious light. Select word. Phones. Semicolon. Slap. Pearl use. Pack title acme random. Title emoji. Space quote. Snake random emoji. Push. Semicolon. Enter. Enter. Phrase get. Space quote. Slash. Snake random emoji. Push. Go down. Push. Escape. Go down. Push. Go left. Delete word. Snake random emoji. Push. Opdub. Phrase sub. Space bracket. Enter. Pearl my. Dollar cap. Op equals phrase shift. Semicolon. Enter. Dollar cap arrow. Phrase render. Paren. Enter. Up slap. Phrase template. Opdub. Quote. Snake random emoji. Push. Comma. Enter. Phrase emoji. Opdub. Snake random emoji. Go down. Semicolon. Tug, go down, semicolon, slap, slap, phrase app, arrow, phrase start, semicolon, slap, 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 go up, dunder all caps data, enter, at sign second, space, snake random emoji, dot, harp trap, mad look, dot, each pit, slap, embed pearl, pearl embed, dollar phrase emoji, push, space, ship yank, air yank, space, all caps, pearl, space, embed pearl, pearl embed, Dollar phrase emoji. Pop. Select end. Cut. Tag heading one. Paste. Jump. Pop. Jump. Space. Phrase style equals dub quote. Kebab text align. Colon. Phrase center. Semicolon. Save. Focus eye term. Command one. Cap harp. Mad odd dip. Space plus plex space title random tab. Enter. Dot slash title random tab. Dip air each mad odd near. Enter. Focus chrome. New window. Phrase local host. Colon. Three zero zero zero. Slash. Snake random emoji. Enter. <laughs> <Reload>. <laughs> <laughs> Mono stop. It was a real gamble there with the random emojis. I'll just point out. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. I had to, I had to re record a couple times. So. <laughs> Video finish. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, so how do I work in the browser? Uh, the browser, I use a, a plugin called Vimium, which allows me to navigate browsers just like, sort of like you would with Vim. So if I um, hit the F key or FAR in my setup, then I get all these like hints as to where all the links are. And then from there, I can just tell it, you know, if I want to click on my handle FAR FAR, it'll hit Touche there or, you know. So that's how I navigate around using, using the browser. 
GitHub is very good about being accessible, by the way. I would like to specifically call them out. They are excellent. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do another little demo here which uh, picks up where I left off with the app and we're gonna commit to Git, push to GitHub, make a pull request so you can see that flow. Video play. Git checkout new. Snake random emoji. Enter. Run git status. Git add. Title random tab. Enter. Run git status. Run git commit. Sit. Phrase mojolicious app. Space. Phrase featuring random emoji. Sun. Vim save quit. Run git push. Git push, phrase origin, control whale, phrase origin, space, phrase random tab, <laughs> scrap, run git push origin, phrase random tab, enter. Focus Chrome, new tab, <laughs> open random emoji repo. Link, dip look, phrase random, tab, 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 enter, reload, link, mad, tab, 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 phrase Pearl is awesome, escape, Page, <laughs> link, dip, page, link, harp, link, sun harp, page up, video finish, next slide, next slide, okay. So now that you get a sense of the flow, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the challenges that I've encountered using voice. Next slide. Next slide. One is the learning curve. So the learning curve can be a bit steep. If you think about, if you get a new keyboard, you try one of these like crazy customized keyboards, the learning curve is pretty steep. So take that, but imagine now you're using a different part of your body. You're now hearing sounds you weren't used to hearing. So you might not be able to as quickly think while you're working because now you're hearing stuff. and um, So that can be difficult. Also, if you're trying to learn this while you have an injury, that can be a bit difficult because you're trying to learn a thing so you don't have to type, but you have to type to be able to learn the thing. It's kind of a chicken and egg, difficult bootstrapping issue. Um, it's still pretty new, I think, in the you know using voice to code space. Um, and there are some conventions, but in general, like a lot of people have to build their own tool sets and sort of grab pieces from here and there, and you have your own bespoke thing. So um, that can be a little bit more of a, a you know difficult. Next slide. Okay, so <laughs> tools with poor accessibility. So most of the time, when I run into a roadblock or have a frustration, it's not Talon, it's not Dragon, it's not you know something with my tool set. It's often I encounter an, an app that is not built that with accessibility in mind. It's a website where there's a button and I can't click it because it's not the actual HTML button and it's not a link and so I can't get to it. And that's really frustrating, it makes me really sad because then I have to spend a lot of extra time working around the thing or finding a new tool and learning how to new, use a new tool. Um, so this is my call for all, for all of us developers out there to find, there's a lot of great talks about accessibility you know, keep yourself, uh, you know, up in the accessibility uh, space and, and find some great talks and help build tools that you someday might appreciate having access to. So, this is not what this talk is about, but, you know, go, go find, go forth and find the talks. Next slide. Next slide. Voice strain. So, what happens if you're talking to your computer now for eight hours a day instead of typing on a keyboard eight hours a day? you can put strain on your vocal cords. So now you need to take extra care about taking care of your vocal cords. Maybe I'm not gonna go screaming all weekend at a rock concert or something, um, but I'm you know, gonna make sure I'm talking at an even tone. Turns out 
whispering and talking very loudly are more strain on your vocal cords. Uh, I also at home have a humidifier and I keep the temperature at a good space, so I try to you know keep keep a good uh, health of my vocal vocal cords. Next slide. Next slide. Open offices. So I know in tech everyone loves to complain about open offices. Uh, I do not have opinions about whether they're good or bad, but when you add a microphone, there are some challenges with that. So uh, if I am in the middle of an open office and I have a microphone there, I might be generating noise that's bizarre to some people to hear. And also, I'm going to get noise into my microphone that might get in the way of me working. So there's a few solutions to this. Next slide. Next slide. One of them is this curious contraption called a steno mask. So, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so they, uh, so you put them like around your mouth, and it's meant to contain your speaking into the device, and then also block any background noise. So you, if you use one of these, hopefully you're not bothering your neighbor, and they're also not bothering your voice engine. So, sort of uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, th they do look a little odd, you know, but. Um, when I was on the plane here, I was like, you know what? It'd be great if I had a steno mask right now, because then I could like work on my slides, and not bother like you know these people sitting next to me. So um, they do have a purpose, and a lot of people find them very useful. Next slide. Next slide. Acoustic pods. So this is a slightly more expensive option. Uh, I did talk to one gentleman who does work by voice, and his company bought him an acoustic pod. He gets to sit in it, you know, near his team, and it's this little like glass thing that sort of contains the noise, which is kind of cool. Um, next slide. Or remote work. So I am lucky to work at a company that's very remote friendly and I get to, you know, be in my house with my humidifier and the temperature as I, as I like and I can like lay on the couch and, you know, because I don't need the keyboard, I can lay on the couch and talk to my computer or lay on the floor, you know, or, you know, deploy software from Warrior 3 or whatever. So um, it's great. Next slide. Not so big challenges. So things I thought were going to be challenging but actually weren't supporting specific programming languages. So there's actually not that much that you need to do. Like just with the basic keys, you can, I can go start writing Go if I want. I can go pick up Python, you know, write Python if I want. Um, if I want to optimize the experience of writing for that language, I can add things that make it easier. But in general, like there's no, nothing blocking me. I don't have to go like write a library just so I can then work in Go. Uh, it'll just sort of work. I can do some fancy things where if I have voice commands for a specific language, they're only active in when I'm working in a file with this file extension or something like that. So I can have the same commands for Perl, but do different things, you know, in Python and Perl and things like that, which is cool. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, voice dictation friendly code itself. So uh, there wasn't that many things I ran into here. My voice tool set is pretty flexible and powerful, so. Uh, in general, like there weren't that many things, but there are a few things I thought were m worth mentioning and I think are good practice anyway. Hopefully there's nothing too controversial here, but uh, using abbreviations and acronyms thoughtfully. So if you don't need to use it, uh, maybe th think twice about it. Some acronyms and abbreviations, great. They're, they're perf perfectly fine to use if they're well, well known and you know things like that might make more sense. But uh, if you abbreviate things or make an acronym when you don't need to, not only are you making it harder for future readers of your code, they may not know what the acronym means, and also I have to spell them out every time with the letters, so that makes me sad. So if you use the word, I can just say phrase the word, and that's great. This also has a benefit to people who use screen readers when they hear the code. If it's a word, it, it also benefits them. So. Don't try to save on vowels. So if you want, you're trying to like, oh, I'll just remove a few like letters because it's making me like slightly more efficient. You know, this would be one of those times maybe like you don't need that optimization because um, it's clearer. I can say phrase backspace instead of saying bat crunch sun pit cap every time, right? Um, shorter files in general make things easier for me. So if it's a super long file, a lot of times I navigate around using the file number. So I have a command that's like spring five and it'll jump me to line five. And if the line number is 15,153, that gets really annoying. So um, shorter files, I think, are, are better for me and hopefully just you know good practice anyway to try not to make 15,000 line files. Next slide. OK, so the why. I want to revisit the why of why am I giving this presentation? Why am I talking to my computer? Why am I here talking to you about talking to computers? Um, and I would be doing a disservice if I didn't reiterate the impact that this kind of technology has for people who uh, can otherwise not use a keyboard or mouse 
uh, for people like me who uh, I was facing some pretty career limiting or potentially career ending injuries. Uh, I feel, you know, feeling like door is closing and, and, um, and, uh, you know, and then talent comes along and then, uh, it, uh, really helped save my career. I think, um, it, it helped me get quality of life back. So if I don't need to type on the keyboard, I can, I reduce my pain levels. I don't need to take any of those anti-inflammatories anymore because that's an unsustainable situation. Um, I, uh, no longer need to, um, I know I'm no longer interrupted as I'm working. So I can work and I can think about my work. I can stop when I want. Oh my gosh. The first day when I got to just stop working because I wanted to stop working and not because it's time for a stretch break or gee, my hand's really bothering me. Like that was like a huge relief. Um, so I just want to, you know, Oh, how did we get there? Last slide, last slide, last slide. Last slide, last slide, last slide. So I just want to reiterate the importance of this kind of technology. Next slide. Next slide. So the takeaways, take care of your body and appreciate what it can do for you now. It's actually quite an amazing instrument and I think we don't all spend enough time appreciating what it can do. People are using speech to code in real life today. So there are people out there. This is one of the things I was surprised about when I started, is that people are actually doing this today right now. So it's not like this is a thing that may happen in the future. It's happening right now. Remember your non-keyboard users when you're building things, because maybe someday you will be that user anyway. And you don't want to cut off access to someone for using your thing. You want people to use your things, I hope, right? Um, also, so this is the most thought leader thing I will say to you today, the future might actually be more diverse than the keyboard mouse model. We've been relying a lot on touch to uh, control our computers, and I think we might be right on the cusp of some changes to that. So you're seeing things like voice assistants becoming more popular, Siri, Alexa. You're seeing things like Apple announcing that they're expanding um, support for voice control on all their devices. There's even companies that are using neural signals, so there has like a wearable device that will uh, interpret your neural signals and allow you to, in to control your computer. So even for people without injuries, we might be looking at a future where we have a more diverse model. You're not just relying on keyboard and mouse all the time. So um, I think it's very interesting. Next slide. Thank you for coming to my talk. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. By the way, Fastly is hiring. Next slide. Next slide. Here's some useful links for you. So the Talon website, uh, my Talon, all my tools on Talon are on GitHub in public. So there's also a Talon community repo where you can, um, if you want to get started, that's generally where we point people at. And then the Talon Patreon again, if you want to support technology like this. Next slide. If you have questions, I'm here for questions. Yes. Do you find yourself trolling the like uh, opera singer forums to find ways to protect your voice more? I haven't yet made it to the opera singer forums. Yeah, I've been digging down deep to my like high school choir experience <laughs> um, to see if maybe some of those exercises would be good. Um, another, I don't know, this is like tangentially related, but I have. Uh, some of us have started watching like beatboxing videos because some of the sounds we can actually build into the voice thing and have them recognize. So some of the people who use eye trackers for the clicking, they'll use like a pop noise. And so, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and a lot of the noises are actually easier to make and less strain on your vocal cords than words. So there's a there's also a um, some research going on with the Talon author to support more noises. Um, yeah. More questions? Has yeah. anybody ever tried to mess with you by like shouting commands? <laughs> I you know that was that was a a threat model I considered. Um, <laughs> no one has done that yet. Please don't. <laughs> but um, yeah. I have not tried on Perl 6 yet. 
yeah. But I imagine it wouldn't be like, like, because I don't find that much difference between, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially since a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, I want to say morphemes, but that's the wrong word. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the symbols are the same. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't expect it to, to be that much different in terms of like having to produce it, yeah. Right. I just realized I'm not repeating the question, so I'm going to repeat this one. It was a question about the community, whether we're sharing standards, communicating with each other, and how, what does that look like right now? And um, the answer is yes. So there's different, uh, there's sort of different tribes right now of like people using different things. So Talon isn't like the first of these voice systems, right? There's the voice code, and there's another system that's like Caster, Dragonfly, and there's different people using different things. Uh, right now, Talon's Mac only, so the Mac only folks tend to go with Talon. I don't need to set up any like extra VM or, or do any other crazy stuff with this. I literally just install it, which is nice. Um, there are some email groups for the Dragonfly Caster folks. They have an email group, and then the Talon group We've got a Slack community, which is actually pretty helpful. It's been like uh, so nice to be able to just pop in there and ask questions and like get help with things and people posting their scripts or like how do you do this and like it's really nice. It's really cool. Yeah. Are there any people working on visual tracking so you can do you know the mouse surrogate? With your eyes? Yeah. Yeah. So Talon has support for eye trackers. I have an eye tracker. It's like a device looks like this. It's got two cameras. It sort of follows where your eyes are, and then the mouse cursor follows where your eyes are moving. Um, the for me, like I haven't made use. Of, a lot of people make use of it. Uh, I'm maybe one of the oddballs that doesn't. And part of that is because I kind of like to be able to like be in Warrior Three and like deploying software and like <laughs> not not be standing in front of my computer. Um, but they are pretty neat. One interesting tidbit about them is when you first set it up, it sometimes feels a bit jittery and like the you know, cursor's bouncing around. And I found out that it's not actually the technology or the camera or anything that's making it jittery, it's your eyes. Yeah. It's your eyeballs that are that jittery. <laughs> yeah, and your brain like just like Tune makes, it tunes it out and makes it all seem, seem sane. So um, I thought that was interesting. Right, so the question is whether in real life I've started just, you know, spelling the alphabet like in my alphabet, and the answer is yes, all the time. You know, I'll be looking at something, and instead of spelling it, I'm like saying the talent stuff for it, and it's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. You can drop in. Like, I do some of this stuff as I'm working. I'll iterate. I'll, you know, open my talent file, and then I want a command that does this. And some people have done things where, you know, you hit this key and this key, and then you, you know, go write this many times, and then you, you know, enter, and it'll do the thing for you. Uh, generally, like, um, I don't have that many for Perl just because I haven't, like, bothered to build them, but you could, you could go crazy. Like, you can, there's, you know, there's a lot you can do. So, so yeah. Yeah, so the question was about, um, I, this talk was a lot about me adapting, but what has my team done to adapt while I'm dealing with the situation on my team? So my team has been really supportive. A lot of the things that I really appreciated were like having the flexibility to do, to work when I want to, where I want to. So sort of flexible schedule. They were always very insistent, you know, that I take care of myself. So 
not a culture of like, but you know, you didn't work five hours today or whatever. Um, also, there were some uh, communication things we changed uh, as I was going through, as I was learning that were helpful. So um, asynchronous communication where possible is super helpful. If there's a conversation in Slack and it's going on and it's about my code and I'm at a point where like, I gotta stop typing and I don't feel like I can keep up yet with the voice thing, you know, it, it, it puts me in a position where I have to choose whether I am able to participate or like, do I risk my health, right? Um, so shifting, if it's communication about the PR, it happens in the PR. If it's about, if it's not a JIRA ticket, it happened in a JIRA ticket. Um, if, or do we need to have a quick Zoom meeting? Zoom's great, you know? I've been trying to, you know, I think people are shy about just getting out a video, but sometimes like those are super helpful and to give people a break from the keyboard. So things like that, yeah. Do you foresee a time when people will use this as the preferred method of input for a like on smartphone? Yeah, so there are definitely times with the iPhone where I wish I had talent on there. Um, <laughs> by default, so the, the question is, what, do I see a time where this might be the default way to interact with the iPhone or maybe a computer? Um, I think it could be. I'm not sure. Everyone right now is so used to keyboard and mice, but with technology getting good enough to where people might use it because it's good and not because it's your last resort, then things might be a little more interesting. Um, there's uh, like the, the Apple is now supporting voice control for iPhone, which I'm really excited about and curious to see how that's going to work. And I think it's starting to become a little more normalized that like, hey, guess what? There are other ways to interact with computers that just aren't your keyboard and mouse. So um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Um, the, the, the question is about uh, how's my experience with Slack and its accessibility. So there's one problem with Slack, which is not necessarily how it's built, uh, but just that things are happening in real time. And if you have someone who's dealing with an injury or something, they might be in a position where, hey, I'm, I'm up on my 30 minutes. I gotta, I gotta cut this, or I'm, you know, risking like aggravating my symptoms and then I'm gonna be out for a week or something you know um, that can be a little bit of a challenge so I think slack is a great tool but using it for the times where it really is necessary to have sort of like a, a, a real-time conversation is good in terms of the application itself they did build a lot of keyboard shortcuts into so it's not completely you know unusable for me I can use it but it's sort of using the model of tabbing through applications to access everything, which um, if you have to know how many tabs it takes to get places, it sort of adds an extra layer of like frustration when you use a tool. So I much prefer, like the new s stuff on Mac, they're starting to do a thing where you can get the, I think it's show numbers or something, and then you can, it's sort of like how the Vimium stuff works, and then you can jump to the thing you need. So I'm hoping things move toward, more towards that model. Yeah. The one in Chrome is Vimium, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like Vim for your browser, I guess, yeah. Do you have any microphone recommendations? Did you have to like, hunt through different headsets to find one that worked well? Sure, so the question is whether I have microphone recommendations and whether I had to sort hunt through some to find one that worked well. So the talent community already has a lot of opinions, which is great, so you can pop in there and be like, yo, what microphone should I get? And people will help you out. Um, I did go through a few cycles. I didn't jump right to the you know, XLR mics. I started with just like a gaming headset to like, is this even gonna work? I don't know, let's you know, see, how, see how this works. And that, that actually worked quite well. I have been told to steer clear from uh, wireless mics because the latency can create a little bit more headache. So I've stuck with cords. This one's an Audio Technica, I think, cardioid mic. And this one so far has been, been my favorite in terms of um, picking up only my sound and sometimes it, it's a little sensitive so I have to talk louder so you see through the talk on the next next slide next slide so I think some of that like I still need to tweak but and keep in mind like I've only been doing this for like nine months so I'm scratching the surface of what all this can do and you know it's I'm sort of like Peter Faraday with a keyboard but now it's like well what's next is are there things I can do better than a keyboard could ever could right yeah Over and start trying to control, control your screen, like, you know, like close the Zoom call or switch windows or 
Yeah. So the question is when I'm on Zoom, whether um, my voice system will sort of take over and try to do stuff while I'm talking. And it could if I don't put it to sleep, if I forget. So um, yeah, that's a thing I can say, Talon sleep, it's going to hear me. So if I say the other one, it'll wake up. But um, <laughs> it, it, it would, but I just usually put it to sleep. The one that's really annoying is Dragon sometimes will just like spontaneously like wake up. And, <laughs> and then you get all kinds of like, you know, random stuff where it's, you know, who knows what it's going to do. Is Talon going to win? Is Dragon going to win? Who knows? So then I got to make sure to put Dragon back to bed, you know, but anyway, yeah. You're dead when uh, Alexa and Siri start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the end of my questions, but I will be here. I'll be like out there to answer more questions if you have, or I'm also on Twitter. Um, so yeah, thank you all for coming. I'm clapping for myself. <laughs> so I have I have some other talks coming up. I'll be at Deconstruct in July, and then I'll be at Strange Loop in September, and I'm still waiting to hear back from two more. So, yeah. <laughs>